Greetings. Welcome to our service for All Saints Sunday, the 1st of November in 2020. A couple of things before we begin. The first one probably is that the congregation has, of Decorah Lutheran Church has called a congregational meeting for next Sunday, November the 8th. It will be immediately following our drive-in service. The purpose of the meeting is to vote on extending a letter of call. And we invite all of the members of our church to try and be in attendance. Unfortunately, no, there can be no absentee ballots for that vote. We begin our service. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now Sharon will lead us in For All the Saints. salvation let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the Church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy help save comfort and defend us gracious Lord Amen let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, 
and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John, the third chapter. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it, it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. But what we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him. For we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Here ends our reading. A reading from the Gospel of St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Jesus saw the crowds when he went up on the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Amen. We've all heard and seen and know the Beatitudes. Jesus proclaiming blessing to those who walk in his way. Jesus proclaiming blessing to those who come to him. I was thinking about these verses this week and it occurs to me that they're talking to about they're talking to us now today they're talking to us in the situation we find ourselves in right now these aren't just words from long ago and far away but they're words for us why do I say that? I say that because it occurs to me that these words are words of promise. That these words are words of hope. And that's what we need to hear right now. That's what we need to hear in our world at this moment. The world can be a terrible place and some strange and troubling things are going on. We know that there are wars and violence in many places and, and it seems like there's nothing we can do about it. We're troubled by the violence and threats of violence that are going on in our own communities, in our own state and around the nation and wondering what that's going to mean for the future and what that's going to mean for us living our lives from now on. And it worries us, and it should. We look at the election going on, and, and just a moment, please, if you haven't already, take the time, make the effort to go and vote in the elections this week. Elections have consequences, our actions have consequences, and we need to do this 
for our sakes and for our nation. But this election has been so divisive, has been dividing people so badly. And lots of folks are worried about what's going to happen with this election. People on one side are worried that the whole world is going to change if the other candidate gets elected. And others are so worried that the things are going to just get worse if we don't change direction and change leadership. And then there's an illness that's disrupting all our lives. There's this COVID vaccine infection virus that's just going and, and spreading and we thought it was looking bad, but now it's looking even worse. For many, the, the infection is, is not as deadly as it was, but it's still affecting a lot of people. And it's still causing problems and, and problems that go on not just for a couple of days, but for even months and potentially years from this infection. And we have a right and a need to be concerned about where things are going and what's going to happen next. And in the midst of that, we hear these words. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the peacemakers. Jesus giving us, on one hand, words of promise. Words of promise that when we care about these things, when we try and do something about these things, that God is with us and that God will bless us. And that blessing will go on, no matter what happens. And even more, I think, this is God's assurance. This is God's assurance to us that even though things may seem unsettled at the moment, they're not always going to be this way. That even those things seem in turmoil, they aren't always going to be this way. Because God is in charge. God is in charge of this world. It was God's voice and God's word that brought order into the chaos. And brought our universe into being. It is God's word who brought order to the chaos and brought this planet Earth into being. It is God's word that brought us into being. God is still in charge and his hand is still at work in this world. So I'm worried about where things are going. I'm worried about whether I'm going to get this infection and what it's going to do for me, uh, to me. I'm worried about what it's going to do to my family and my friends and uh, this whole congregation. I'm worried about what's going to happen with the climate and what's going to happen with a, a hundred and one other things. But I know that God's in charge. I know that God's hand is at work in and with and through all these things. And I know that no matter how troublesome it may seem right now, God's blessing is at work in our world and it will be okay. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who work and care and do. God's blessing is with us. God's hand will guide us. God's love will sustain us. 
And for that I say, Hallelujah, Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. And now Sharon plays for us, Shall We Gather at the River? reign to come among us. We pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of all saints, we praise you for evangelists and martyrs who sacrifices witness to your gospel across time and space. Inspire us by their courage to carry our faith to new people and places around us. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We give you thanks for all the saints who have gone before us. For the light of faith they have kept alive in this world and shared with us. We name before you our loved ones who have been claimed in the promises of your kingdom. We remember today, especially by the candles, members of our own congregation, Raymond Brager, Richard Sokjin, June Fisk, Bob Heyman, Lee Rory Brenneman, and Don Knudsen. And we remember as well all those other families and friends who have gone on to victory. As they stand with your saints in the company of light, give to them your eternal peace. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Lord of every nation, guide us all. Red states and blue states, rural voters and urban voters, young and old, as we take part in another national election. Bless us with wisdom and guidance as we choose those who will serve us in the years to come. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord of creations, the seasons change and we're not always ready. Be with those who are still completing the harvest. Be with those who are still finishing outdoor projects and preparing for winter. Bring your help and blessing to those facing even more storms and hurricanes in the south and those still wrestling and trying to contain wildfires and drought in the west. Give to them all your help and your blessing. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Bring your healing help to all who are ill. Bring your comfort to all who grieve. Bring your guidance to all who are seeking. Bring your spirit to us as we share the people and needs in our hearts today. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you with mercy and grace. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.